You know what today is, Mary? What? What today? What? X Cup day. <laughs> what today? <laughs> Doing some more X Cup stuff. What, what today? <laughs> Mary got excited. She thought it was a different day. <laughs> Landing gear, wheels. This is always a fun part. So the plane starts really coming together here. As we uh, said in the unboxing video, we, we, we are going with the optional uh, sprung landing gear from Hangar 9. So I like the more traditional Cub style gear. I know in real life, if you ever ordered a you know full scale X Cub, you're gonna get that um, just kind of bar style. I forget what the actual name is, but that's the style that comes with the airplane. It's right here actually. So I don't like the way it looks and these are actually really weak anyway. Apparently they're not strong enough for the X Cub. So they would go right here, kind of something like that. You'll see it, you see it on a lot of foamies and stuff, that style landing gear, but on a Cub, I just don't think it looks right. So we kind of went over that already in the unboxing. So here we go. Here's uh, the extra contents of the sprung landing gear. You can see you get everything, uh, all the M3 by 15s and uh, the M3 nuts, the brackets, the, you know, everything basically. So we're gonna start doing it. Very first step right off the bat, um, since this plane is set up to come with that other gear, you can see, I don't know if you can see these two holes right here on the bottom. So can you see those two behind the covering? Yeah. Okay. The dark mark. Mm -hmm. So you, I already went through the direction. So to do this landing gear, you got to poke through the covering on these two spots. And then uh, you can, I mean, you can cut it out if you want, but the screw and the bracket are going to go right over it. So I'm just making like kind of a little cross, just poking it. So we're gonna grab one of these guys, just one of the brackets, they're all the same, we got four of them, and uh, grab some M3 by 15s. And since we're doing metal to metal, basically a blind nut or a T-nut is already installed from the factory, we're gonna put Loctite on there. Always gotta have Loctite, guys. We're gonna start putting these on there. The ears face outside. Get one through there. And I already did check the blind nuts with, with a, uh, a spare M3. So they all do thread in. Now, if you had a, a tight blind nut, you would have to get your tap and die set out. I ran into a couple of those uh, kind of bad blind nuts on the carbon cub. No biggie. You just gotta clean the threads out with a, with a tap. Where's my, uh, there it is. So you can see the, uh, the two little poke marks I made in the covering are fine, you know, because the bracket covers it. Just slowly tighten these up. And you'll know if these aren't threading into the blind nut correctly. You know, you'll feel resistance. You just gotta run a, you know, tap through. As you tighten it up, you'll probably hear the wood crunching a little. That's just the, you know, the blind nut pulling into the wood more. You don't need to be He-Man with it. There you go. So we got another one here. These holes are already cut out because they're actually just in the, the wood cut out. It's these two front ones. So we'll show you the two front ones real quick and then we'll uh, just move on to the next. And remember M3 by 15 in the sprung landing gear kit, you get primarily M3 by 15s. And that kit comes from Horizon. Yeah, this is right from Horizon or um, I think Tower has it, but you know, Tower Hobbies is owned by Horizon now. Like I said, I already checked these. There we go. Get another M3 by 15. Put some uh, red lock on. Whenever you're doing stuff like this, it's always just good to get open the bags and lay out your parts. Just kind of gives you an idea of what you got if you're missing anything. But when it comes time to grab the, the appropriate screw you know they're right there because there are a couple different sizes and we're just going to put these two on now okay pretty easy sounds good all right so time to uh install the cross brace on here and m3 by 15s and we're going to be using the m3 lock nuts and you're going to see it goes right here in the front set of uh, tabs we just installed just like that now, what I did notice, Mary, you can show, see how, see how these ears, they kind of come 
They're flared out. They're right? flared out a little bit. Mm -hmm. So it makes it really hard to squeeze it with just this little M3 hardware. Now you can see this one, I've actually squeezed it beforehand using a pair of channel locks and you gotta kinda, you gotta use a piece of rubber or something so you don't obviously scratch all the paint. Mm -hmm. But you can see the ears are straight on that one. I ran into this with the carbon cub also. So these ears are just way too wide for the little, because mm -hmm. you still get some slop in there. I think I'm gonna put a washer or a rubber grommet in there, sorry. I did that on the carbon cub. Let's kind of straighten these up so we don't have to do it with the hardware, because this is decent metal. So what I, basically what I'm doing here, guys, is just putting some, just some scrap rubber I had laying around, set my channel locks to about you know, the width of it, put the rubber around it, and just squeeze. And a little more. Yeah, you could have done, I could have done this off the airplane too, but it works on here. But there we go. Now, there's, now the tabs are, or the ears are straight at least. So there we go. So it's just a little tip. I straighten them up. You can see the, the piece of rubber leaves no scratches. Good to go. Let's move on. All right, guys, here we go. So we got a washer set here. Uh, this is just some regular old neoprene, or not neoprene, uh, just, I, maybe they're neoprene, I don't know. Just a rubber washer set. And I'm just picking a size close to M3. You know, these are just basically to dampen any chatter and make it a little softer movement. But on the carbon cub, makes a huge difference. You can see it just, mm -hmm. eh, I don't know what size they are, but. Harbor Freight has the same washer set. Let's do this. So this part's kind of tricky, but it's well worth it, I promise you. It gets rid of any chatter. So the first one's the easy one. <laughs> As it keeps falling out, you just gotta get it kind of started on there. This stuff is so tiny. Get our cross brace, put it through there, just get the, there, just come out just a little bit. Then we're gonna move those out of the way. <laughs> just get this kind of slid up in there and it should kind of hold it so as the bolt comes through the other side, it'll grab it, you know? Five point five millimeter open end. There we go, guys. So it still squeezes it a little bit, but you have some uh, rubber damping in there now. Mm -hmm. All right, let's do the other side. Okay, we got the cross brace installed. We had a little, little trouble with it. So we got our O-rings in there, and basically you can see, you know, even with the O-rings, this still kind of wobbles back and forth. But if you didn't have the O-rings, it would slide back and forth and chatter. So now it's got kind of some rubber cushioning there. So I really like putting those O-rings in there. It's it's awesome. You can see them in there. Kind of showed you already. But another thing to bring up, we had a little little trouble with it. You know, it's just parts aligning and whatnot, but. These ears, these tab, these brackets that we put on, when you put them on, this is how ours was. You need to take up a, any little bit of slop that you had and kind of tighten them up to where the brackets are on the outermost position. Because what we ran into, we put this one on and then the crossbar was just like, it was like a millimeter too far off on the hole. So we had to kind of loosen the brackets up and tighten it up with them out as far as they would go. Because there's always a little slop in those bolt holes. But basically this one went out like half a millimeter and that one went out like a half a millimeter. So then the crossbar was able to go on. So we had a little issue with it, a little setback, but that's uh, what we had to do with our kit and now it's on perfect. So looking good. All right guys, on to the next step here. So we're gonna do the actual legs here. They want us to put the springs on. This is where we're gonna use two M3 by 20s. So here's the front, the plane. It's gonna be like that. Bolt head, 
in the forward in front of the plane. Just come on through. I have to twist there it goes. I have to twist it a little with the wrench. No thread lock needed because it's a lock nut. Don't need to go too crazy. Just make sure it pivots. So now we'll just kind of with that dangle and they have us doing uh, this guy right here. So we're back to the M3 by 15s. Just fit it in there. Yeah, and it just goes in there. So these actually fit pretty good. So I don't need the washers in there. Same thing, the front of the plane, bolt goes in that way. Thread it through. There's no threads in there, it's just, but the threads will kind of help move it along. This is gonna be tricky, because these things are so tiny. These little M3s, and there it goes. <laughs> there we go. Just start it with my finger. Uh. All right, so that one's on. Let's try to get this one on now. <laughs> Once again, M3 by 15. Well, then you look, it should articulate, yeah. So yeah, it sits about right there. And these, they don't move that much, guys. So <laughs> if anything, they move about that much. Okay. So, but yeah, it's good. Looking okay. Good, looking good. Um, so we're gonna hook up the actual spring. So uh, there are actually two metal springs in here, like co actual coil springs, and they're really stiff. Um, a lot of people switch to uh, shock cord. So they'll get one eighth inch shock cord and do four wraps. And you actually get our actual suspension. Might do that in the future. But for now, we're just gonna go with what's on there. So this is where we want the Ten. the tens, right here on the cross brace. There we go. So you do gotta pay attention because there's three different size, uh, or sorry, three different length M3 bolts. So let's run that through, just put a lock nut on the back. Is that a good snug up? Let's get the other one on. Plane flipped around. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna set this down. All right guys, time for the wheels. So fun part here. So we got our awesome German PMTs, 197 millimeter, works out to about eight inches. And we ordered some uh, axles from Extreme Flight when we ordered these wheels. They're eight millimeter axles. Um, I thought they would work. Um, I, think, I think they're thinking we're gonna use the original landing gear that came with the plane because this would have sandwiched onto the tab of the landing gear. This will not work here because it has to go into the set screw and this just doesn't go far enough in for the set screw to hold it. So these don't work. But they would have worked with the original X-Cub gear. So we're gonna set these aside, we're not using these. We're gonna use the black ones that came with the Hangar 9 gear. Now, what we did take from the uh, stainless axle set is we cannibalized all the washers and stuff that came with it. It gets a little confusing because the Hangar 9 bolts did not come with any Teflon washers. So we've got a metal washer on there. Black, tef black Teflon or black plastic, might be Teflon, I doubt it. And then we're gonna put it through here. White Teflon on the back, because remember these are actually sealed ball bearings. So you want plastic you know, riding on the, on the bearings. And then we've got our two set screws. So there's one on each side. We have them with the thread lock already set. And that's what's gonna hold this. So we're gonna just put this in. Tighten them up. So I did those ahead of time because uh, it's just kind of hard to get to. Hmm. <laughs> Let me hold that. So we'll do one. Hit and feel it bottom out, and then we'll, then we'll uh, just kind of give them last final snug up. 
There we go. They're both bottomed out and they're going to grab the threads of that bolt. There we go. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. That's it. Not bad. Good. Easy. So, seems actually a little easier than the carbon cub um, ones. The carbon cub ones, we had to swap the tires onto the original hubs and we had to put the hubs together. But luckily these hubs were already put together. So that was a lot of the work done for us. All right, let's flip this plane around and we're gonna do the other one. We're almost ready to set it on its wheels. All right, first things first, let's get these set screws started. Oops. All right, everybody, we got the wheels on and they spin beautiful. All right, let's get her off the stand. Check out our, our first glimpse of this baby's stance. Oh, oh Mary, if you can grab the actual. Yeah. <laughs> you can see how big this is. Is getting. Oh boy. She is looking top notch. But you can really see how big this thing is getting. Man, look how wide that. This thing is awesome. <laughs> so, of course, we don't have the tail wheel on yet, so it's going to sit just a little higher. Probably about yeah. right there. Actually, let me just put this here so. Actually, it doesn't slide away there. But man, does that thing look awesome. What do you think, Mary? I love it, <laughs> love it. Oh yeah, I do I love the, the landing gear upgrade. Man, this thing's big though. Next step, we're gonna do the lift struts and the jury struts on the wings, guys. So we have our left wing out, obviously just one wing at a time. Uh, we got everything laid out here. You're gonna have to dig out quite a few parts. So you're gonna have to dig through all your parts bags and you're gonna have to find these, these gray brackets, these silver uh, jury strut mounts, and then the lift strut end pieces. You got some quick release pins for the jury struts, the cotter pins, some fuel tubing. You're gonna need M3 washers, M3 nuts, M3 by 15 bolts. So, uh, you know, basically a lot of hardware. So just kind of get everything ready. That's what I always do. It really helps the build process rather than digging through the bag, looking for piece by piece. So we kind of got everything ready on the hardware end. We have confirmed that the M3 by 15 fits in the blind nuts perfectly. So there's no burrs in the threads. We don't have to clean it out with any taps. And then these silver guys for the jury struts go in here perfectly. So those threads work also. So everything's ready to go over here. Moving over to this side, you're gonna need the actual lift struts themselves. So the jury struts are right here. You just, uh, you know, these are, uh, the jury struts are universal. They're, they're all four identical. You're gonna need the spreader bar. And now here's where you gotta pay attention because the actual lift struts are wing specific and they do not um, label it on the bag. So you kinda gotta figure it out yourself. Me and Mary figured it out and we labeled it. So this is the left front, so left wing front bar, left wing rear bar. These bars, these lift struts are airfoil shaped, remember on the carbon cub. So the little airfoil goes to the front and you can see there's this cutout in the back. So you gotta find both airfoils going forward and then this cutout. And then they meet in Meets like that. And you can see those tabs just mount to the bottom of the airplane. Okay, so it's gonna kind of look like this when we get it installed. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So that's on the bottom of the plane. These uh, where the my marker letters are. Now what? The, and then what these are? Again, these are wing specific. These are just strut covers. These are totally optional, but it's part of the kit, and they look really cool. They're a fiberglass piece just decorative. So slide it on, you have to slide it on first. And you can see how it matches the airfoil shape and then it's like a teardrop going backwards. So when it's all installed, it's gonna kinda look like this. 
So pretty cool. And again, that's optional, but we're gonna do it because it looks cool. So you can see there's quite a few things you gotta dig out here and get ready. Just kind of make sure you've got everything figured out, and laid out and ready to go. Manual calls for um, blue Loctite up on these four. But then for some reason, the manual says right here just to use canopy glue instead of Loctite. So not really sure why, but they, <laughs> they changed it for a reason. So I am gonna put just a drop of canopy glue right here. I don't know. Let's get going. Now that we've went over all our stuff, we're gonna start assembling. So first things first, we'll get one of these guys here. Get a, an M3 by 15. And like I said, we've already checked the threads. They do work. And we're just gonna lightly start it. There it goes. Before we tighten it down, make sure we get the other one going. Blue Loctite, by the way. I know my little container is red, but the Loctite itself is blue. You never wanna use red. That's pretty much permanent. I've never understood why they make the, the container red for blue Loctite. And all four of these brackets are identical, by the way. Really the only side specific items were the two main lift struts and those uh, fiberglass uh, kind of decorative pieces, the covers. Where's the hole there? Okay, there we go. It's good. Next, we're gonna screw these guys in. So like the direction said, just put some canopy glue on. Again, I'm not really sure what the reasoning is, but we're gonna do it. A little canopy glue, a little white glue. And what they said for right here is you screw it in until this shoulder, you can see where the thread's in. Just screw that in until it's flush with the wing. That's pretty much right there. So now, do so we're gonna take one of these guys and I just want to see how much thread is on this end I want to make sure that that knot is in the middle yeah it looks, it looks like it looks pretty good me and Mary are choosing to put this together not on the plane so I'm not gonna put any Loctite on there yet because when we do our final adjustment outside we're gonna so we'll just kind of throw that in right there so you can we've confirmed that there's half the thread bar in and half out so that's plenty of support so this is gonna go in just like that what we're gonna get here M3 by 15 again an M3 washer remember the direction the plane flies so we're gonna put the bolt through this side another M3 washer M3 nut This guy, I just need my nut driver. Let's get the other bar on there and then we'll do the jury struts. So what I'm gonna do here, guys, is I'm gonna- Do you have any padding? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna put a, some padding down. That way the little tab here mm. isn't rested on the plane. Okay, cool. All right, let's do the other bar. So same thing. We're gonna confirm, you can kind of tell, confirm that the about an even amount of threads on this little rod or sticking out. Yeah, so it's about half and half. Grab another end. Once again, we're not putting the Loctite on right now because we're gonna, we'll do that at the very end when, we, when we're outside doing our final adjustment right here. Okay, it's tight. Back it off just a hair. Okay, set this down. Let me grab my hardware. We got an M3 by 15, M3 washer, direction of flight, bolt goes in front to back. Another M3 washer, M3 
Lock nut. Tighten it up. Uh, don't forget guys, these parts need to be on there. As you can see, it's just gonna go on there. You're gonna mm -hmm. mark your holes later. All right, cool, looking good. Let's do the, the jury strap part. So airfoil, make sure it's kind of flying forwards. Um, we got a spreader bar, put it in the middle. M3 by 15, M3 nut, you know the drill. Uh, <laughs> kind of a bunch of, th bunch of stuff right here. Hold that. Mm -hmm. I got enough I, room. Yep, I got it. I've got enough room to get a washer on. You know the drill. M3 washer and an M3 lock nut. So you don't need any thread lock. Okay. Do you want to put the pin in to let it sit? So yeah. It rest on there? Yeah, so. I got it. So this. Good idea, Mary. So this is where we're gonna, where the X cub difference from the carbon cub, another difference, because they met, they give you these quick release pins so you could take it apart at the field. Mm -hmm. So right now, you actually can't get any fuel tubing on there because they've got, it's... because they've got that yeah. slop there. So what you can do is you can squeeze the ears and you could get the fuel tubing on there. But we can leave it like that. For yeah, now. we can leave it like that for now. Okay. So we switch sides, get the airfoil correct. So this gets a little tricky here, guys. Like, Whew. Let's tighten this up. Let's get a pin in. Okay. <laughs> it won't fall forward or back, will it? Uh, no, I, I think. It only goes a certain distance. There you go. Okay. Cool. <laughs> all right, everybody, so we got it all installed. So you can see it moves around because it's not hooked up to the airplane still, obviously. Once this is on you know, the airplane, the bottom of the fuselage, it's pretty solid. Now there's a couple adjustments that we still have to do. Uh, we gotta figure out if we even gonna use some fuel tubing. The, the fuel tubing that is optional, the only thing it's gonna do is get rid of that slop. Mm -hmm. But the way they've done this is with a cotter pin. So you remove that and then the jury struts fold out of the way and, the, and then these, uh, this whole assembly folds down for transport. So this is a quick release setup. Uh, so fuel tube is optional. We'll probably put it in there just because it'll get rid of that slop. And then right here, we haven't attached these yet because we have to make one final length adjustment right here. So this is your only length adjustment is on this end. So once we finally attach it to the airplane, we're gonna go outside on, on maiden day or taxi test day and we'll make that final adjustment. And then we'll, at the same time, we'll screw all that in place. And that'll be basically guarantee that this attaches in the same spot every time. That's it guys. This is actually a simpler setup than the carbon cup because the carbon hub, carbon cup, I don't know if you remember, had those turnbuckle uh, okay. adjustments on this end too, which made it very complicated because you had adjustments here and adjustments up there. So you kind of, it was just a little too much in my opinion. So this is really nice. There's only adjustments right there. That's it. But it's all put together. It's getting there. Let's do the other wing. Time lapse time. So we decided to do something a little different. Instead of putting it on the actual plane first, we took the jury struts, put them upside down, and attached them on here before you actually put it on the plane. So I think it'll be easier, hopefully. That was Mary's idea. My, I think, my idea. I think it's a good idea. <laughs> All right, let's All right. try. Keep going, Mary.
So as you saw, Mary had a great idea with attaching the jury struts to the lift struts off the wing. Seemed a little, seemed to work way better. And uh, yeah, I would agree, it went in a lot easier. A little bit easier. And you can see, so here's our markings that we made. So we are on the right wing now. So we got right wing, rear, right wing, right wing, <laughs> right wing front. So like I said, the only real side specific are the actual, the long parts, the lift struts. And uh, just mark them. So it makes your life a lot easier. Um, but there we go. So you can see it's just moving around, but it's just gotta get attached to the airplane. And then we'll do our final adjustments at the end. But that's it, these are on and ready to go. The jury struts just kind of sit there. That's just, once you get it all together, they, they just kind of, you know, they're just, they just hang out. But that's about it, guys. So that's all we got done today. We got the, the landing gear and the wheels. Had a couple issues with that, but that went out, came out really good. And then both sets of lift struts and jury struts. You got anything to add, Mary? Mm -mm. Yeah. We're gonna keep moving on. But thanks for watching, everybody. And uh, like, comment, subscribe. If you got any questions about what's going on, just like always, ask us. Thanks to everybody.